Hello guys again and welcome back to the channel. What you see here is the PS1, which is the later PlayStation 1 revision, which looks and feels awesome. However, being released in year 2000, it is over 25 years old now, and in order to keep using it perfectly fine for the next 25 years onwards, it should be recapped, which is the task I'm going to demonstrate in this video. Please hit the like button to support this channel, share the video and post some nice comments, and let's dive in. Before we start our recapping process, please go and check the ultimate recapping guide that I made before this video. You can find it in this playlist. Watching that guiding video is very important if you are a beginner. But if you are an experienced recapper, you can basically follow along this tutorial. But I highly recommend checking that video first, as it is the ultimate comprehensive guide on recapping. It will explain the desoldering methods that we are going to use and the tools that we need in order to complete our recapping process. But what you do need to do is to go to console5.com and grab yourself a cap kit for this particular PS1 model. You do that by checking the motherboard revision as seen in this clip right here. With all of that with us, now we have to begin by disassembling the console. Just take the screws at the back and after that open the shell and gently remove the CD drive assembly as seen here. Now it's a good practice to do a general cleaning of the board, general wiring management if you have a mod board like myself. But most importantly what I'm doing right now is labeling the bad capacitors that we need to take off by a marker. I don't think this is uh, what people do uh, because most of them label the capacitors after replacing but for me I always label them before replacing. Okay so let's start with our first capacitor labeled C601. It is 47 microfarad capacitor with 16 volts ratings. If you check the ultimate capacitor replacement guide that I posted earlier and I put the link down below, you would notice that this method that I'm using right now, it is the twisting method. And of course, it goes without explanation that you need to clean with isopropyl alcohol and maybe sometimes with solder wick, but at this particular pad, I didn't need solder wick, just the isopropyl alcohol with a Q-tip. And then I proceeded with thinning the pads and soldering the new capacitor, but I did it off camera for this one. All right, so next we move to C731. For this one, I wanted to do the rocking method or the soldering iron method that you see in the ultimate guide link down below. As you notice, this method is really less destructive than the previous method, but it also takes more time. And sometimes you cannot put uh, the soldering iron if the area is so tight. But I managed to successfully desolder this one. And I proceeded, of course, isopropyl alcohol, cleaning the pads, uh, thinning them, and install the new capacitor in its place. And as we watch this capacitor getting recapped, it's about time you guys press the like button and subscribe if you're not subscribed. Also, you can check thundertronics.net for the upcoming article about this recapping process with high resolution pictures as always. Next, I proceeded to capacitor C705. As you notice, the, the capacitor is very small and its value is 0.47 microfarads. Now, the capacitor kit that I got tells you that uh, the replacement capacitor is a non-polarized capacitor. So it is okay if the cap kit that you took is uh, verified and uh, they have verified that this uh, situation actually works. Well, if you check the ultimate guide that I linked down below, you would notice that this method is called the snipping method. For me, this method is considered a non-destructive because you are cutting and actually fully cutting the capacitor before you take it off the board. Unlike the twisting method where there is a, an actual force being applied to the pads. But even this method is not really perfect. If you are uh, hesitant or if you are like on, on a hurry and you just yank the capacitor up, it will cause damage to the board. So please be sure to do it slowly and uh, make sure that the snip actually snips and you hear the sound before you take uh, the capacitor 
off. Next, I proceeded to do the four capacitors labeled C600, 637, 617, and 605, which mostly belong to a power regulation circuit, and later on followed them by capacitor C602. You can see here that I didn't really do a capacitor by capacitor basis, but more like an entire area desoldering first, cleaning, and then resoldering capacitors one by one. I believe here if you have a hot air rework station it can benefit you a lot since these capacitors are really close to each other and you can desoldering them quite easily. But I made this tutorial only using very basic tools just to tell you that you don't really need the, those sophisticated tools like uh, hot tweezers or something like that or maybe the hot air station but uh, to, to say the least the hot air station actually got to a very very low price and reasonably nice quality that it's mostly a no-brainer at this time. There will be a full tutorial about using one of them and I will tear it down and show you everything that's related to it and how to use it. But that's for another video. Well, the irony is after mentioning hot air and how safe it is, I actually made a mistake and tore one of the pads of one of the capacitors in the video section which is very important in this console. I survived this mistake by soldering an external wire between the capacitor leg that has a torn pad right now up to the ferrite bead that it connects to or supposed to connect to. I used this schematic and my own general knowledge about these circuits in order to basically solve my mistake. So please be careful when you do such operation because the luxury of having a schematic and even the knowledge of some circuits may or may not be exist at the time that you make uh, such a mistake like I did right here. And basically guys, continue rinsing and repeating until you finish all the capacitors. Yes, it gets like repetitive and flat out boring at some times, but you have to endure that and imagine that this console, if you recap it right now, it will last for at least 20 to 30 years without even needing to consider recapping. As I'm recapping the last capacitor, guys, please press the like button and show me some nice comments in the comment section, as well as share this video to anybody that's interested in recapping. Also, Please check the ultimate guide that I keep repeating all over this video because it's really important and it took a lot of my time and my resources to do such a thing because uh, I see that most people on, uh, on YouTube are doing some kind of mistake here and there and uh, not all the guides are as comprehensive as this one. There will be a write-up for this particular video and as well as the ultimate guide that I mentioned in my blog thundertronics.net as well as I have the store where you can check. I sell uh, power supplies for Dreamcast and upcoming uh, power supply for the Sega Saturn, which people are interested in. Maybe check my Discord. Uh, a lot of people are there discussing uh, retro gaming stuff and my products. And uh, for this video, pretty much we have uh, finished everything. I really recommend uh, do a general clean up after you finish recapping or working on any board. You may also check the continuity between uh, some tracks that you suspect that you maybe uh, broke uh, during your procedure and check the continuity between the capacitors, uh, positive terminal and ground. Maybe you have shorted something, maybe you have missed something here and there and check the continuity between the capacitors on negative terminal or the ground to the actual ground of the board for the capacitors that uh, apply for this. Then just proceed to reassemble the console and do some testing to verify your work. That's basically it guys. Uh, please like, share and subscribe uh, to this channel. It really helps a lot for the uh, YouTube algorithm that you press a like button and do some nice comments. And I'll see you in the next tutorial which is going to be about the Super Nintendo or Super Famicom, the Japanese version. See you next time.